Welcome to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, where you will learn how to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, finance, turn around, and operate mobile home parks. And now, here is your host, the fifth largest mobile home park owner in the United States, Frank Rolf. Did the SAFE Act really make you safer, or did it just hold back the ability of many hardworking Americans to obtain affordable housing? We're going to be talking about that a little more on our Mobile Home Park Mastery podcast. This is the second in a five-part series on the legal side of park ownership, and we're going to focus on the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank, their impact, and how you have to navigate around those very carefully as a park owner today. So what is the SAFE Act? Well, what the SAFE Act is, is it's a piece of legislation that came up in 2008, coming off of the Great Recession and the collapse of single-family home loans, mortgages. And the government had to point the finger at somebody. So who do they choose? Mortgage companies. Of course, you can't point the finger at the actual consumer because they're voters. But mortgage companies, not that many collective votes in that. So let's punish them. That was kind of the general attitude. And everyone knew better at the time. They knew it was ridiculous. But nevertheless, it was kind of a ridiculous time in American history on some of the things we did. So lo and behold, here comes the SAFE Act coming down through Congress. And here's what it did. It changed forever, at least hopefully not forever, but for the moment forever, the way that people can enter into mortgages. Because you could no longer enter into a mortgage under the SAFE Act unless you were SAFE Act licensed and compliant. And that means you had to get a license and you had to comply to a giant set of rules and regulations, all with a lot of teeth in them, and be subject to such things as audits and other items. So when that came out, many park owners said, now, wait a minute here. I don't deal in mortgages. I deal in installment sales, a completely different item. I'm not like someone doing a mortgage on a single family home. I'm more like someone selling a refrigerator on payments. But then the state of Ohio said, hey, mobile home park people, we want you to know that an installment contract, as far as we're concerned, is the same as a disguised mortgage. Now, many lawyers raised their hand at that junction and said, wait a minute now, you can't do that. That's not actually true. We all know better than that. But nevertheless, no one wanted to really fight the state of Ohio, and park owners don't have a lot of collective cloud or political power. So we just kind of all bowed down and said, all right, fine, we will not make mortgages anymore unless we're safe act licensed and compliant. That gave park owners basically one of three routes. They could either go and get safe act licensed and try and abide by all these rules that they did not have enough management experience to possibly do, nor did they want to spend the money to figure out even how to do it, or they could simply rent mobile homes or they could sell them for cash. So if you didn't want to get Safe Act license compliant, you had to basically just rent or sell for cash. Now, let me tell you a little story, which kind of gives you a feel for my my take on the whole Safe Act thing. I once wanted to get a cat for the backyard of my house in Dallas because houses in Dallas and some neighborhoods have a real problem with rodents. And so what a lot of neighbors did when I moved to the neighborhood was they bought cats and put them in the backyard, and that kept the rodent population down. And so I went to a place that sold cats. Humane Society and said, hey, I would like to get a cat. And they said, what do you want to do with the cat? I said, I want to go ahead and let it free roam in my backyard, you know, nice landscape acre of land, and I will go ahead and give it plentiful food and plentiful water. I'll play with it, whatever the case may be. It'll be a very, very happy cat. And they said, no, we won't give you a cat because living in your backyard outdoors would be worse than death for a cat. And I said, well, gosh, that makes no sense to me because cats are pretty much feral outdoor animals, aren't they? So why in the world would it being an outdoor cat be a terrible existence? And they said, well, just would. Trust us. We know what's best for cats. So then I said, okay, well, in that case, could you give me a cat that you're going to kill today? Because I know you have to gas a certain number of cats, I guess, every day as, as part of overcrowding in the in the cat population there at these facilities and they said well no we won't do that because the cat would would be much better off dead than it would be living in your backyard well i beg to differ with them on that i think that if they had asked that cat the cat would have said no no you know actually i would be much happier living in that nice backyard than being dead and that's kind of how the safe act was that whenever you give the government the ability to decide things for you, it's a really, really bad situation. 
So what happened overnight, a lot of people that traditionally could have bought mobile homes couldn't buy them anymore. That's really all it accomplished. So all those moms and pops, all the park owners, ourselves included, who'd been selling homes, we couldn't sell them anymore. All we could do is rent them. Or you could buy them for cash. But, of course, customers in affordable housing rarely have enough cash to buy a mobile home outright, unless it's a very, very inexpensive home. So that was the beginning of the problem is the SAFE Act, making it impossible to write mortgages on mobile homes unless you became SAFE Act licensed and compliant. But then things got worse. 2010 came around and they added on to that what's called Dodd-Frank. Dodd-Frank was an even crazier set of guidelines in the SAFE Act. Under Dodd-Frank, you had such new items as the ability to repay law. Basically, in a nutshell, and I'm no expert on it, but I've read about it and I've even written articles on it. Basically, what that one did, the ability to repay law, says that if I give you a mortgage, if I grant you a mortgage and you default and don't pay me, you have the right to sue me because I should have known better than to give you a mortgage. That's basically what it means. So even if the person effectively didn't tell the truth on the application, it's still your responsibility as a person providing the mortgage to vet that out and do all of your due diligence. And of course, that's crazy. If someone defaults on paying you for something that they agreed to pay you for, they should not have the right to sue you. You should have the right to sue them. By the time Dodd-Frank came around with another thousand pages of insanity, Park owners at that point were completely convinced we're not going to be following any of these Safe Act or Dodd-Frank guidelines. We're simply going to rent homes or sell them for cash. Now, there's another wrinkle to that that came up as time progressed. People started doing another policy called rent credit in which you give the customer retention points, same as dollars they can use to buy the home. They can save those up. Now, you might say, well, that's crazy. Why would park owners do that? Why would they give people a pathway to ownership. Well, it's because when people can be owners, they take get better care of the property. So is it economically smart? No, it's probably better just to rent things forever. But park owners don't want to really be home renters. They want to be land renters. So what they decided to do was to go ahead and give people a pathway to ultimately owning it, even if it was not in the park owner's best financial interests, because operationally it was far superior. And that's how things have trended. Now, the big problem with the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank going forward is it's going to fall apart. As we already know with the Trump administration, they are probably going to go in and start undoing, in a big way, the CFPB and a lot of the things that they were doing. And to be honest with you, it's probably about time because there's so many thousands of people, maybe millions of people, that were unable to buy a home since the Great Recession began and the SAFE Act came down in 2008. Think of all those folks over the last decade that couldn't buy a home because of this crazy law. It's just no different than me and the cat. So, And it's not just mobile home parks. It's also single-family homes. It's any kind of dwelling that this pertained to. So it's really a horrible, horrible shame. And I think a lot of people are now realizing what they actually did was a very wrong idea. I bet if you talk to a lot of the Congress people that were involved in the passage of the SAFE Act, the Dodd-Frank, most did not realize the ramifications And they certainly would never have voted it in if they'd known what the damage it would have truly done to those people who wanted the American dream of home ownership. But nevertheless, they did it. And now they need to undo it. They are starting to undo it. Things are starting to happen. The gears are turning. But the weird ending is even when they get done, the damage has already been set. Many people are not going to go back to selling the mobile homes. They're going to continue to rent them. And the reason is the courts are still extremely hostile to the concept of foreclosure. Back when I got into the business, if you had a mobile home and you sold it and you sold it on an installment sale rent to own agreement and you didn't make payments, you could get a simple eviction. Later, the judges became concerned. Is it something that's an eviction or does it need to be a foreclosure? So in the course where it became a foreclosure, the park owner was was dealt this terrible hand because to get you out of the home that you're not paying on would cost thousands of dollars to go to court to do the foreclosure and with a huge delay process. So even though Safe Act and Dodd-Frank may be taken apart going forward, it may not end the hostility that park owners are going to have against anything but renting because they're put in this bad position if the customer does not pay. So Safe Act and Dodd-Frank's damage may go on even beyond its ultimate reversal. Because if you read, there's a lot of folks that they're saying that they need to be ended. But the problem is, even if you end that 
will it really end the court system and the judicial system, which is now permanently affected in their own thinking on whether what we do when we rent to own or sell out an installment sale, a mobile home, if that truly is an eviction moment or a foreclosure moment. So that still hangs in the balance. Now, a lot of park owners, again, have tried to adapt to the SAFE Act and tried to adapt to Dodd-Frank as best they can, because really all we want to do is simply rent land. That's our goal. We have no interest in writing mortgages, no interest in renting homes, no interest in any of that. Our perfect utopian world, all the homes are owned free and clear by the folks in them, and we simply charge land rent. However, that's not always the case. Often what you want to do is you want to fill your vacant lots. Well, the important part of this story is the advent of 21st Mortgage and other groups who have started financing mobile homes for the customer. However, the park owner has to be in the loop or they won't do it. So the park owner has to go in there and basically not co-sign the loan, but has to agree to pay the mortgage payment in between customers in the home. That's a very effective program, and it's a win-win for everybody. And thank heavens that it started, because finally, once again, there's, there's a return, a slight return of credit to the industry for people who want to be homeowners. But it's really a horrible tale that we have to go all the way around and work that hard to give people who have the money and the desire to do it, they have to go that many steps for them to become a homeowner. But that simply is the way it is. Now, the other bright spot on the horizon is that under the Duty to Serve Act, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are discussing starting to issue mobile home loans again in 2019. This is a critical step because if they'll only go back to issuing mortgages, real mortgages, safe at compliant mortgages on their own, park owners don't even have to get involved in this anymore. We ourselves are very, very happy that they're discussing opening the floodgates again to creating mobile home paper, chattel paper, on the part of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in 2019. We think it would be great. Until then, again, every park owner needs to fully understand the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank regulations. If you're buying a mobile home park, one of your first stops should be to call your state mobile home association and say, hey, what's the story in this state? How does it work? What do I do? Get all the facts and decide for yourself. What makes this thing really difficult is there's really been no case law to go by. I'm unaware of any park owner ever having any kind of lawsuit or interaction with the CFPB on the Safe Actor Dodd-Frank. I know people have talked about it, but I've never actually physically seen the case. I called someone one time because there was a rumor that they had a problem with it, but they didn't. So I've never found anyone who has. So there's a very good likelihood that nothing will ever transpire going forward. But nevertheless, you don't want to be that pioneer. You don't want to have the problem. So you got to get educated on the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank. Again, I think in many ways they're probably going away, but nevertheless, they are still the law today, and you cannot own a park without fully understanding them. The good news is that most of your state MHAs have a very good handle in their state of how the process works. So it's not that hard to get the information that you need. Hope you found this interesting. We'll be back again shortly with the third in our five-part series on the legal side of park ownership, talking all about evictions. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at mhpmastery.com to subscribe to the show, read our show transcriptions, and access all of our great information on mobile home park investing. 